And welcome everyone to another Tom and Shane uh, video and uh, today's topic uh, we're going to talk about how to find business building ideas the easy way and uh, there's several easy ways to do it Shane and we're going to talk about them huh? <laughs> wouldn't you great. say yeah. Yeah. So you're always, yeah you're always looking for you know as we've talked uh, a number of times new ideas new inventions new concepts and how to advance uh, the the base of your uh, business, especially if you've established one. You know, how, how do you add to it? How do you add mm -hmm. to it to go further? Yeah, well, that's what we want to talk about today. I think it's interesting. Uh, I was reading the other day that uh, back in 1900, uh, the uh, head of the patent office uh, decided uh, they should probably close because all the good ideas that were possible in 1900 years had been thought of. I mean the life was never going to get better than it was in 1900. And that, that's so. right. And, and, you know, it's, it's remarkable because NASA was formed in the late fifties, uh, uh, you know, by um, Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, I guess, uh, NASA ha is the single largest holder of patents uh, with the U S patent office. So, you yeah. know, it, it, it's only happened in our lifetime that, you know, people thought everything that would be or needed to be invented would be. And, uh, mm -hmm. boy, that changed very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it really did. Yeah. Well, of course, we want to we want to talk today about how to find new business building ideas. That's our topic for today. And um, the uh, small business building ideas come from knowledge, uh, Shane, as you well know that, uh, you know, if I wanted to learn to play golf, I wouldn't ask a bowler uh, you know, how to play golf. I would, I would go see the golf pro, right? I mean, I would go see the, I would go see somebody who knows how to play golf. Or if I wanted to bowl, I'd go find a, you know, a bowling teacher and say, Hey, teach me to bowl. Uh, how to uh, hold the ball and my approach and how to throw it and all that stuff. So, uh, so yeah, that's what, um, that's where business ideas come from is first knowing your business, knowing what your business is, what it does, uh, how it works. And, you know, this, this covers every spectrum we've talked about, like in, in the example, like uh, marketing, uh, marketing of your company, how to find new business ideas for marketing. You know, you, you don't want to do something that destroys your brand, which we've gone over. On, on the other side, you know, you might have a type of candle for the sake of argument that you're selling. And you find out a different way of uh, uh, pr providing that candle in, in other than just a plain glass container. You might have get a decorated glass or a painted glass. So innovation is always the, uh, the, the child of uh, new benefits and uh, new cash flow. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing that, um, you know, happens, Shane, uh, when we talk about these things, uh, uh, it was a great book written many years ago. Um, you know, and it was just find a need and fill it. Well, jo Joe Carbo, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, the lazy man's way to riches. And uh, that was his theory, find a need, um, uh, and create or create a need, uh, as, We've talked about from time to time creating a need like the hula hoop. You know, nobody nobody was crying for a hula hoop until they saw one. And then they said, oh, I got to have that for my kid you know, or the pet rock or any number of things that were uh, novelty items that uh, we had to have. But people came up with ideas and then they created a need for it and filled that need. And that's, that's uh, where great business ideas uh, come from. Yeah. That's right. And, and you look at the Peloton. I mean, the Peloton is a remarkable piece of equipment, very expensive, like four or five thousand $5,000. And then you have these uh, courses that they provide that you, cause there's a TV on it. Um, but the reason I bring it up is because what generation is this? This is like, you know, generation five of, of the, uh, you know, the workout machine at home, you know, years ago, I, I, I met one of the greatest marketing gurus in the United States. I can't remember his name, but he was famous for doing those uh, uh, commercials on TV to sell products for 1995. And mm -hmm. the, the remarkable thing about it was is, uh, how you the difficulty and the success of that at the same time is you can saturate a market very quickly. You know, but if you if you can show, like you just said, a, a way to come up with an enhanced idea of something old and make it new, 
boy, even in the mm-hmm. 21st century, something that's, you know, 60 years old is an idea, yeah. you know, comes home <laughs> to roost. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, um, we want to talk about two ways to generate new business ideas today. And uh, there are more than two, obviously. There are probably thousands of ways to create business ideas. But uh, these two are a couple of uh, my favorites uh, that I uh, like to talk about. And uh, the first one uh, is the easiest, and that is let someone else come up with the idea for you (laughs) at no charge. And uh, the way you do that, of course, is that when someone in your industry does something, generally it will show up in some kind of trade magazine or it'll show up, uh, you know, in some news industry newsletter about your business. And uh, you can copy that idea and uh, incorporate it into your own business. And you've, you've sort of got a direction of how it, what the idea is, how it works and all of that. So uh, that's, um, that's a pretty easy way to do it. Um, you know, and, and one of the things that I always tell people, um, you, you've got to spend a minimum of 20 minutes every day reading something about your business or industry. If you do that for a year, you'll know more than 75% of the people in it. I guarantee it. So uh, sacrifice out the time, um, you know, uh, that, rather that's than, absolutely right. And, yeah. you know, this applies to a lot of things. It, you know, it applies to gardening. It, it applies to your finance and, and how you're investing for retirement. You have to spend time every day, not some days, every day. Get in a habit at a specific mm-hmm. time, early in yeah. the morning or late at night, whenever it can be, to spend that 20 minutes at least, more preferably if you can, um, yeah. Because all great business ideas have three components that are very important. One is the capital cost to develop it. And mm-hmm. uh, in, in social media in the 21st century, yes, you can have your own website, you can sell your own product, and that's a great thing. But there's there's a cost behind that. Uh, the second is distribution. And distribution can be from sales directly that you make. Um, or through uh, having other uh, brick and mortar places uh, sell it for you because it's a popular item. But, you know, this is where it gets so difficult because for you to ramp up, perhaps to sell uh, your product at Walmart, well, they have almost 12,000 stores globally. 12,000 stores. I mean, you know, know, if you provided them with 12,000, that would only be one in each store. And, you know, they're going to want 1,000 in each store. So, you know, that's like 120,000 pieces of whatever the product is. So distribution is really important. And, you know, and then the consignment concept important, too. I mean, if if you're going to let your product sit at Walmart, do you do you want it to be, be you know, they won't pay you until it's sold. So, yeah. you know, you have to provide that up front. So things like this, you have to put in perspective, even in your own business, as far as inventory uh, for your website or inventory for your brick and mortar store that you have and the products you want to sell. Yeah. Yeah, the second way to find new ideas is uh, for you to come up with the idea and you're the one written about. <laughs> you're the one that ends up in the industry magazine or the industry newsletter. And uh, don't forget that your employees uh, often see things you don't. Uh, many times they have ideas. Uh, they might be a little uh, you know, nervous about bringing that idea to you, thinking that they know more than you do, being the owner. But uh uh, you've uh, uh, don't forget uh, the employees that uh, they're they're on the front lines every day and they see things that can be done more efficiently or in a better way. And uh, by all means, um, give them every opportunity to uh, come to you with new ideas. And even if they're off the wall, uh, thank them, be courteous, uh, you know, don't tell them it's a stupid idea and, you know, or you've tried it before, uh, you know, be uh, be encouraging to uh, bring new ideas. And the most important aspect of that is, uh, Thomas, is also that be prepared. In mm-hmm. other words, you need to be prepared to negotiate with a, a, an individual who works for you that you know, so you know them personally, even though it's a business relationship. But be prepared of what to offer or how to negotiate a fair split. I mean, if, if you're going to cover the cost to develop it, 
you know, to, to capitalize on the idea, you know, maybe you're entitled to more of an interest. But as we've said, as you go along in business by yourself, you always want to have at least 51%. You know, you want to control something you're putting your money in. Do not risk, uh, you know, any money unless you control it. So, yeah, you've, you've got to be prepared of, of listening to your employee with the idea. And you also have to be prepared of what you're going to offer them for them to be willing to share the idea, innovate it and make it work for everybody. Yeah, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, we got a short checklist uh, for finding a new business ideas. We'll go through here really quickly. Uh, one of them is your experience. Do you have a experience you're not using in your current business? Can this unused experience help or benefit the customer in some way? And can you adapt it to your business? Uh, are you too close to the business? You've been doing everything A, B, C, D. Try doing it B, D, A, C once in a while. Uh, industry trends. What are you uh, reading about your industry? Where is it headed? Uh, how does the Internet affect it? The next election, the Olympics, stock market, local government, and also the image of your business. Is there expertise you have that the customer is not receiving in some way? And also ask your customers if there's one thing you could change about the business, what would that be? And ask your employees, as we mentioned before, uh, be sure to uh, include them in any of your uh, thoughts or decisions. And um, what would you change in the business if you were running it? What would you do? That's right. Most, most people find that uh, their eagerness to start their own business comes from the fact they've gotten experience in some area or some field. Um, or, you know, of course, they've been trained or educated to do it. And, uh, you know, being close to your business, as, as Thomas pointed out, is being educated, being aware, spending that 20 minutes and learning every day something new and seeing what's going on as trend in, industry trends evolve, new, new inventions, new concepts. And, uh, you know, branding is your image. You know, you don't want to do anything and and put something out there that can affect a uh, brand uh, that you've created. And uh, when you, you know, when you ask your best customers, you know, it depends on whether you're a retail uh, sales company on with a brick and mortar or even on the web or your uh, distributor and uh, you on the web where you sell a product, but you have others that want to sell your product too. So they're customers. So you got two types of customers, customers buying your product directly and customers buying your product from someone else. So all these things you have to prepare for, develop ideas, concepts in your business plan, financial uh, plan, and your marketing plan, and it will carry you to success and make you happy every day to wake up knowing you work for yourself. All right. Uh, I thought of a great business idea. Now what? Now what do I do? Well, there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, one is you need to, uh, is it compatible with your current business philosophy? For example, uh, if you have a, a hardware store, are you going to start carrying food? You know, um, uh, am I going to get my hammer and a gallon of milk on the way home? Uh, is that, will that work or not? Uh, if you build it, will they come? Is there a demonstrated market for your idea? Will you need to educate people like in the case of the hula hoop? And what would be the cost of that education, that advertising and that marketing? Uh, features and benefits. Uh, is the product unique? And what about your competition? Uh, are they going to react to this idea? Are they going to copy it? Uh, what's your window of opportunity? And is your price in line with uh, the other products and services you're selling? You don't want customers coming in a sticker shock. And can the new idea be packaged with current products and services that you currently offer that can increase your bottom line? That's right. And, you know, uh, here's a great business idea to keep uh, be, be aware of and be conscious of business hours. How many hours do you want to be open? I mean, if you're a brick and mortar uh, business, uh, with lots of foot traffic or you have a captive audience because you're amongst uh, condo or apartment buildings, you know, hours may be important because other stores may be closed when you could do maybe some of your best business. So business hours, hours are, are, are important. Of course, being on the, uh, the, the web in the 21st century, virtually you're open, as they say, seven by 24. But boy, you, you've got to step back and, and look at the analysis of that brick and mortar operation, because you may find that innovation can be as e easy as adding things because of the hours you stay open 
that people will come to your store to buy and end up buying something else. It's always a drawing card. If you can get them in the door, you might be able to upsell them as well as sell them. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> hey, we need to uh, let you know that, uh, hey, we're, we're live on StreamYard. Uh, that's the program that we use. And if you'd like to make videos like this, because YouTube pays you for videos. I don't know if you're aware of that or not. Nobody else does, but YouTube does. So uh, if you want to make your own videos like Tom and Shane do, uh, the uh, description uh, is, or the uh, link is in the description below. Check that out. Also, we want to remind you to subscribe, ring the notification bell, and like us if you've uh, seen or heard uh, items here that, uh, uh, you know, help your small business. Uh, we would uh, love that if you would uh, subscribe and leave a comment. Uh, what's your favorite business building op or uh, idea below? And also, we're on Patreon. If you'd like to be a supporter of the show, we will support your business, either with uh, recognition here on our channel or uh, if you'd like personal contact with Tom and Shane about your business, that's available too. And Patreon is in the description below. And uh, you will certainly want to check that out as well. Last word, Shane. Uh, we got to get the last word in here on uh, business building. It's not that hard, but you, you've got to really sit back and really look at your business. Really look at it as, you know, as an outsider would see it. Uh, you know, what's missing? Uh, is there, is there anything that you bring to the table that you're, you're not giving a hundred percent of your expertise to? And the important aspect of this is because it's your own business and it is seven by 24. You think about it, you know, the last word on finding business building ideas is they make it, they, they make your business new again. So, you know, that's a great thing. It's always, it makes you more encouraged. It gives you um, a more of a positive attitude. And, you know, always having something new to sell is like learning something new every day. Yep, that's it for sure. Hey, don't forget, we're on radio as well. Uh, Tom and Shane are on every Saturday, 8 to 11 Mountain Time. Uh, click a listen now at kmmsam.com. Nothing to join, nothing, no personal information to leave, nothing you have to <laughs> sign up for. All you got to do is show up and listen. You can call us. You can text us. Uh, all of that is available. And if you missed any of our past shows or videos, uh, they're all on KMMSAM.com. KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast and uh, you will uh, be taken right over there with uh, no problem. So, all right, that wraps this video up. Shane, thanks for being here. And My we'll pleasure, see you. Always. All right. We'll see everybody on Thursday. Same time. Bye for now.